have got to ask ourselves, do we want a political system in which a handful of billionaires can buy and sell members of the United States Congress? Because that's really what it's about. A new challenger approaches. Well, not exactly new, but according to media reports, Senator Bernie Sanders of Vermont, the longest serving independent member of Congress, will announce his candidacy for president on Thursday, specifically for the Democratic nomination. Well, it seems like Hillary Clinton may have to race after all. Maybe. All right, our guest is a conservative elections analyst, political historian, and writer for the Weekly Standard, author of the book A Republic No More, Big Government and the Rise of American Political Corruption. Jay Cost joins us. Jay, thanks for being here. Great to be here. Thanks for having me. Jay, what is this about Bernie Sanders? Wait a minute. We're told independents cannot under any circumstance win an election. It's absolutely impossible. They've got no reason doing it. He must be addled. So why would he run? <laughs> well, for starters, he's not really independent. I mean, he calls himself independent. He's from Vermont. You know how they are. You know, he fancies himself an independent. But for all intents and purposes, he's a Democrat. He votes like a Democrat. He caucuses with the Democrats. Democrats in Vermont are the ones who elect him. The guy's a Democrat. But let's be real honest here. Bernie likes to say that maybe he wants to be a spoiler. I mean, he said it before. So is that really what this is? Maybe just injecting himself into it, getting some of his policies in there, trying to be relevant one last time? Yeah, I think that's probably right. Um, whether or not he's doing this for his own personal vanity, I, I, can't, I can't say. But my guess is, from a policy and po political perspective, what he's trying to do is shift Hillary Clinton to the left. He can't win. I mean, he just can't. I mean, if you, you break down the Democratic Party into its key constituent groups and you compare it to Bernie Sanders' appeal, uh, his appeal is too narrow to win the Democratic nomination. Does he have, though, the, the impetus, if you will, the power, the, the strength to push Hillary Clinton further to the left? Is there something in his speaking, in his knowledge, in his, in his policies that could in any way, shape, or form force her to move? Yes, I think there is. Uh, I think Bernie Sanders appeals primarily to upscale socially liberal whites in the Democratic Party. That's a pretty uh, narrow they, line if you think about it, though. You're, you're really kind of you're kind of really is. going narrow casting there. H however, it is it, it and that it's a pretty narrow appeal in the grand scheme of things in the party as a whole. However, these voters are particularly powerful in caucuses in the Midwest and in the West, where turnout is extraordinarily low, uh, especially in like a Republican state like Wyoming, for instance. I think Bernie Sanders could do very well with Democrats in Wyoming and win the delegates of Wyoming. So while his appeal is too narrow to win the uh, nomination altogether, uh, he is going to force Hillary Clinton to the left uh, um, to win Iowa, for instance. I think the Iowa caucus vote is going to be much more liberal left wing uh, than Iowa as a whole or even an Iowa Democratic primary. So Sanders could do well, and it's going to force Hillary uh, to tack to the left. Then if we talk about Hillary Clinton, then we have to talk about money, of course. And you've actually said this in one of your columns in the Weekly Standard. You said, and I quote, Money does corrupt our political process when it serves as the medium for untoward transactions between politicians and interests. Wait a minute. Are you telling us politicians can be bought? Are we breaking news here? <laughs> <laughs> well, well, hardly. Uh, we're har hardly breaking news. This is an example of a dog bites man type of story, not the other way around. But the column that you, you referenced was really an encouragement and exhortation to conservatives to think seriously about money as a problem in politics. I think conservatives are too quick to just point to the First Amendment and say there's nothing we can do about it, when in fact I believe there's a lot we could do about it while being completely faithful to the principles of the First Amendment. And importantly, this is an issue that Democrats like to talk about. And Bernie Sanders, in the clip that you referenced, uh, you, 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 you rolled earlier, is actually talking about Citizens United there, which I think is a big red herring. It's just a distraction, but it's one Democrats like. So if Republicans are going to do more than just ignore or laugh at the Democrats for all the money that they take in politics, they got to think seriously about money in politics as a policy problem, which it is. Jay, I've only got about 45 seconds left, but aren't we looking at something which really is not going to be solved anytime soon? Because when it comes down to money in politics, look, Power corrupts, absolutely. You have money that's involved. They need the money to run, to run all these ads, to travel and do everything else they do to get elected. There doesn't seem to be anybody willing to take it on and say, let's stop it cold. 
Yeah, that's a good point. I think that there are a couple people in Congress and certainly outside of Congress on the on the right uh, who are interested in this problem. But, you know, one of, one of the challenges that reformers often have is that the political class co-ops the reform movement, passes some sort of mealy or measly reform that doesn't actually do anything, but they get a big headline and can claim success and nothing really changes. Remember, everybody, it's what we always say. Research your candidates. Don't be caught by the slick ads. Don't be caught by the great TV ads. They may look nice, but it's not always the person that's actually going to be in the chair and run your government. Then again, Jay, who listens to us? Uh, rem <laughs> a reminder here, the, the great book is A Republic No More, Big Government and the Rise of American Political Corruption. It's there. Read about it. Learn about what goes on today here in America. Jay, always a pleasure. Thanks so much for joining us. Thank you for having me. My pleasure. Take care. It does not cost anything to stay with us because the fastest 60 minutes in news talk, the hard line continues.